Hey gang, in my previous, one of my previous videos I showed you how to make an inexpensive uh, Commodore 64 power supply using a 5 volt DC wall wart and a 9 volt AC wall wart. In this uh, episode I'm going to show you how I retrofitted some of these older power supplies to make them modern. Uh, I'm basically using a, an inexpensive 5 volt DC switching power supply. Um, you can get these pretty cheap. I'll leave a link um, on eBay or Alibaba for about four bucks. And then I took apart a 9 volt AC transformer and basically uh, took the guts out. And this is what we're going to use for the 9 volt AC source. So, first things first, we have ourselves a power supply. Why don't we take it apart and see what's in it? We're going to salvage the cables out of this power supply as well as the case. So, we're basically going to be replacing all of the guts. Now, this power supply isn't like the real old ones, so the real old ones had all epoxy inside. If you want to do that, you can still salvage the cables, but you're going to have to knock all the epoxy uh, from the inside out. There's a couple of videos, YouTube videos that other people have made showing you how to do that. So. Here we have the inside of the power supply. So we're going to salvage the output cable and we're going to salvage the input cable. This basically comes out. You're left with a really nice clean case. that you're going to be retrofitting with a new power supply, a new modern power supply. Now you might be able to make use of some of the old stuff, maybe even the transformer, but it's heavy, it's big, um, and, it's, and it's old. <laughs> so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go ahead and just snip out the wires that we need out of this. and. Uh, and go from there. Okay, so we're back. So I disconnected the wires, clipped them from the old power supply. These wires are important that we salvage for a couple of reasons. First of all, here's the AC wiring. The reason we want to salvage these wires, oh, not just because you know they're usable, but we want to keep the, the end the little rib piece here that floats into the power supply casing. Um, you know, it's already done for us. So really the only thing we need to do is just solder the wires into our new power supply. You can see there's three sets of wires for the 112 volt AC plug. Well, the hot is all black. The ground is the small green and the neutral is usually the wiring with the white lettering on the wire. In our case, we're not going to use the ground. We're going to have a floating ground. But uh, typically, our, our, our power supply is going to have a fuse. And you typically want to wire the fuse up to the hot side if you're using a, a if it's a plus minus DC um, supply, you want to wire it up to the plus side. In this case for the AC, we wiring, we're wiring it up to the hot side, which is the all black. And again, not that it really matters for us since we're floating the ground and we're not connecting it, but best practice usually you want to put the fuse on the, on the hot side. The other cable that we salvaged out of here was the uh, Commodore power supply cable, the DIN. And again, we wanted to salvage to keep the the little rib that will slide into the power supply box. 
I will give you the wiring for the DIN. You always want to test it. I will give you the colors that I use, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't settle on these colors, you know, um, if I said that black and, and white is this nine volts AC or whatever, be, your colors might be different. You, you don't, you always want to test to make sure you got the right pairs with the right pins on the DIN plug. So I'll give you that pin out. So we salvaged this. Here's the old power supply, basically the internals of it. You have the, the regulator, the capacitor, the heat sink. Uh, maybe some of these things might be salvageable for you. Uh, I mean, the capacitor is going to be pretty old, so I don't know if you'd really want to do that, but, uh, but nonetheless, and then here's the transformer, um, the multiple output transformer that weighs a ton. <laughs> So we're gonna weigh the old power supply against the new power supply. So you can see huge difference. Not only is the new power supply modern with the switching five volt uh, circuit in it, but um, the old power supply, um, it was also very, very heavy. So what we're going to do, the nice thing about these power supplies is that the cases are wonderful and there's no epoxy, none of that old school. Uh, junk that you need to clean out or what have you. Uh, so I made a circuit board that's going to, that the mean well power supply is going to be mounted onto as well as the transformer. Yeah, I'll leave this uh, circuit that I made in the description. The reason these are cut out on the corners is because this is the bottom of the power supply and you need the clearance. You need to be able to clear the posts with the screws fall into, so screw into. So that's why those angles are cut out of the circuit board. Further than that, there's ribs underneath and I want to clear those. So what I did is basically I 3D printed these standoffs that screw onto this uh, PC board. I'm going to epoxy these standoffs to the bottom of the power supply case. It gives it the clearance that it needs and it also allows me to unscrew the circuit board and take it out of the power supply anytime I need to work on it if I need to replace something. Though I doubt that will ever need to happen because if it does, if your five volt switching power supply blows, you, you, you don't want to fix it. You just want to toss it. Just put another one in if that ever happens. Um, they're cheap. They're three or four bucks, you know, so it's not a, a lot of money. It's probably more of a waste of time trying to fix one than just replacing it. You can see also I 3D printed a bracket to hold the transformer onto the circuit board. You can make your own bracket depending on the transformer that you're using. Um, I like the smaller transformers primarily because they fit into the case for one and they're easy to, you know, to hold to make hold downs for. So, um, and you can see, I took the leads, the output leads from the transformer. I don't know if you can see them in here, but they're soldered um, straight onto the board as well. So what we'll do is uh, we'll epoxy these onto the bottom of the case and I won't bore you with that whole process. I uh, will show you what the wiring looks like once it's epoxied in and the wiring um, is soldered on. I'll give you a little bit more, more detail on that. One quick point I wanted to make before we get to the wiring is the specifications um, for the parts that I'm using here, the components. The Commodore 64 power supply is rated at 9 volt AC at 1 amp and at 5 volt DC, 1.5 amps. However, I wanted to also use this power supply on the Commodore 128, which I have a power supply adapter for. So the Commodore 128 also has power supply rated at 9 volts AC at 1 amp, but the 5 volts for the 128 is rated at 2.5 amps, which is 1 amp higher than the Commodore 64. Now, I don't know if you ever tried to put in a Commodore 64 power supply, a Power 128 with a Commodore 64 power supply, but uh, it, it, it won't work. And if it does, it's going to have enough draw where it will give you problems, you know. But initially, typically what will happen is you'll get garbage on the screen. <laughs> There's just not enough amperage to, on the 5 volt rail to, to drive it. So 
What I'm using here, since I want to use this power supply for both the Commodore 64 and the Commodore 128, is uh, the Meanwell 5 volt DC switching power supply that I'm using here is rated at 3 amps. And that should be enough to cover me on the 128 as well as the, one, uh, as well as the Commodore 64. The other thing I want to point out on this power supply that's really cool is it has an adjustment there next to the LED that allows you to adjust the output voltage. So I'm going to be adjusting the output voltage on this a little bit higher than 5 volts at no load because as soon as you turn the computer on the load will bring the voltage down. So, um, so that's a really nice thing to have that you can adjust the output voltage uh, to the right level. So I wanted to make sure that you knew the components I was using and why I was using them um, and the rating. And as you can see, you know, the fuse obviously needs to be rated um, accordingly as well. I'm going to use a two amp fuse. So um, just wanted to make sure that that was clear before I go on to the wiring for you. Okay, so we have everything wired now. Um, I think I've showed you this before. This is uh, the bottom of the circuit board um, being used here. Um, all the components get mounted on the top and I'll, uh, I'll leave the layout and the schematic in the description. So basically, uh, what we have here is um, one of the AC um, leads coming in goes through the fuse and then comes back to the transformer. That's the hot. And then the neutral is soldered right straight to the transformer. And then on the left hand side here, um, I put in a, um, a four wire uh, plug for the voltage that's going to the, uh, to the C64 um, DIN. So let's plug this in and check the voltages and, and then we'll also weigh it and see how much weight savings we got from the old power supply to the new. Okay, now that we have this plugged in, you can see by the LED that, um, that it's plugged in and on. So let's check some voltages. So on pin six and seven, which are the top pins, you should see nine volts AC. You probably will see more than nine volts, closer to 11. 11.2 um, volts AC, and that's nominal. It'll drop with the load, so that's normal. And then we check uh, pins two and five for the DC five volts. Pin two is the most bottom pin, and that's ground. That's that pin right there. And then five volts is the one right next to it, plus. There we go. And we're getting 5.28. So that's what we want. We don't want it to go more than 5.3. Um, that's, you know, that's high enough voltage. I can adjust it. Um, bring it down to around 5.2. Um, we want a little bit more than 5 volts, 5.1, 5.2, um, because the voltage will drop on a load. So, you know, it's normal to have it just a tinge above 5 volts. And that's what that, uh, that's what that potentiometer there next to the LED is for. So you can adjust the output um, a little bit. So looks like we got a working power supply now. And we're good to go. So let's put this together and weigh this thing out and see the end result. Well, here she is all put together and dolled up. So um, I took the liberty of double checking the voltage after I put it together to make sure that, uh, you know, it's as, it's as it should be and, and it is. So um, we are good to go. I thought I would take this opportunity to uh, just uh, cap this video just by giving you um, a little bit of, uh, of an editorial. But in the meantime, I also wanted to see how much weight savings we got, you know, out of an original power supply. This is the most common Commodore power supply you'll find. They're epoxy filled. It weighs three pounds, six ounces. 
and this is our modernized one, one pound, eight ounces. I mean, literally it weighs nothing. Um, now, I will say that this power supply that I used did not come epoxy filled. Um, so, you know, it weighs less than the epoxy filled one, but I still saved about a little over a pound of weight when I retrofitted this and took out the guts. Why? Because the original transformer weighs a ton um, and some of the other components in there like the aluminum heat sink and the components themselves added some weight to it as well. So there's still some weight savings um, that's uh, noticeable. But I wanted to mention a couple of things. First of all, you don't ever want to use an original power supply with your Commodore 64. They're 30 years old. The five volt circuit in there is linear and all it takes is one spike above five volts and it'll just fry your computer. It's just a recipe for disaster. They're undependable. So that leaves you with some options. Buying an aftermarket power supply and that'll set you back about 50 bucks. Um, retrofitting, uh, modernizing um, an existing power supply. And if it's epoxy filled, what a mess. Um, I'll get to these in a second. Um, but the third option, and I have a video I've done on this is you know, just buying two wall warts, you know, get a nine volt AC one amp wall wart and a five volt DC um, one and a half amp um, wall wart and uh, basically just splice, you know, just splice the outputs of those wall warts to um, the DIN plug of, uh, of an old power supply. Um, you do have to have some technical knowledge and at least being able to validate the voltage on the pins are accurate and correct. Um, so that's a, that's, that's a necessity, but outside of that, you know, um, two wall warts and extension cord, I three pre 3d printed a case for the two wall warts I attached to an extension cord in one of my other videos. Um, and that was, that was that it was that easy, uh, with these in modernizing these, um, there's a couple of things I want to point out. First of all, so easy four screws, no epoxy, it's a done deal. Ripping out the guts is nothing. And you've got some quality cables um, that come with them. But what I do want to point out is I believe there's intrinsic value in these power supplies. And what I'm trying to say there is if you're going to buy a Commodore 64 and you have a bunch of selections, and you're not sure which one to choose and all things being equal except the power supplies, look at the power supplies. If you have a power supply that's like this, that's not epoxy, um, uh, based um, inside. Um, I believe there's intrinsic value because you see how easy it is to, to, to modernize them. Um, and the plus side of modernizing is, you know, in this case, not only did I modernize it with the switching 5 volt DC power supply, it's a mean well that's adjustable so I can hone down the output voltage really easy. But the other plus of it is that the mean well that I used in here is 3 amps. And what that means for me is I have a power supply adapter, a power supply plug adapter for my Commodore 128. So because this puts out three amps on the five volt circuit, I can actually use this not just to power my Commodore 64, but with my uh, power adapter, uh, my power plug adapter, I can also use it to power my 128. So I have a dual purpose with this. The other factor, this was 10 bucks to, to retrofit. Um, four dollars for the mean well five volt DC switching power supply and four bucks for the nine volt AC um, one amp uh, wall wart that I took apart for the transformer um, for 10 bucks what a no-brainer um, you don't you get rid of the old power supply it's easy to retrofit um, and you have a good long-term you know power supply for your Commodore that that's not gonna blow it up so Take it for what it's worth. Um, you know, I hope that you found some value in this video. And uh, at the very minimum, if it at least motivates you to go out and retrofit something or, you know, fix something or build something, you know, more power to you. I love watching everybody else's videos and their creativeness, uh, you know, so post them if you have them. Um, love to see them. But uh, at the very minimum, you know, have fun with whatever you do and, Listen, enjoy life. We only live once, right?